These hinges are definitely metal. They're cold to the touch. The head strap here does seem to be limited to this range of motion, and I can see what the real purpose of that was. It's not supposed to be fit on the head like this. It's supposed to be fit on the head more like this with extra pressure causing this to be pulled against the person's face, resulting in most of the pressure being moved from the nose to the top of the comfort kit foam, which is actually an innovative idea. I'm, it'll be interesting to see how that works. Although one thing to note from the out-of-the-box experience is that this rubber was not really attached to the headset at all in my experience, so I have to work on that. Okay, some more things to note from the unboxing. The lenses did appear to have a little bit of dust and maybe a tiny bit of residue on them. The polishing cloth is not a felt sided polishing cloth, although it does have the Pimax logo on it. So be careful not to press if you use this polishing cloth. Um, I know that one, at least one microscope manufacturer actually recommends using breath condensation to clean the lenses, and that is probably the best idea if you're going to use this uh, polishing cloth, is to breathe a little on the lenses carefully, and then very gently wipe that only side to side, never in circles, never up and down, only side to side. Okay, so one small spot of residue has been found. It's in the top corner here. I'm not going to polish it out because it's not in a location where it would significantly affect vision. I'm just going to leave it. But if you did find something like that closer to the center of the lens, that might be more of a problem. Okay, not having plugged this into a computer just yet, there are already a few things to remark on in terms of rigidity and comfort. Uh, first, in terms of rigidity, the build quality is absolutely solid. No creaks whatsoever in the headset itself. It's as solid as a brick. The comfort is a little bit different. This is considerably different than the uni units that were demoed at CES and the Roadshow. The range of motion stops here. And that's actually an interesting approach because it's clearly intended to allow the headset to be tilted more this way towards the back of the head and then to allow most of the pressure to go to the top of the headset, which is an interesting idea. It would definitely relieve the pressure that you tend to get on the nose with VR headsets. Unfortunately, there are a few disadvantages with this. One is the range of motion stops just a little short of the point where it would be most useful to me and these things tend to work better for me than most users so that probably should have gone down just a little bit further or even should have been adjustable. The other sort of issue is that the strap on the back is torque limited. So as you tighten this down it will stop having a grip on the mechanism and it will stop tightening down the headset. And it will do so well before the point at which the headset stops wobbling on the user's head, which is kind of uncomfortable and for VR headsets in general, fairly undesirable in my opinion. Torque limiters in general are fairly hard to get right. And that's, it's also, I would think, liable to loosen up over time. It'll definitely be interesting to see if there's any improvement switching this to a plastic hinge. Another problem that results from this system is that it really defeats one of the key selling points of the mask. You could get this tightened enough that it would work, but then it wouldn't stay. The ratcheting mechanism wouldn't work. So you could get it tight enough to use this as is and then put a piece of tape across this rationing device. But if you did, it would be much more difficult to take this headset off and put it back on than it would be if this just worked. And of course, a big selling point of the mass is how easy it was 
to take off the units that were at CES and put them back on in two seconds. If you were doing a lot of diagnostics or you're trying to work something out where the VR headset wasn't performing the way you expected it to and you frequently had to go back to a physical desktop, that would be inconvenient. Okay, 3D printed hinges applied. The, these are the new hinges in green. They're printed at hips, so they're a little weak, so it's just an experiment, but they did print the first time successfully despite needing some support material. And they still don't go quite as low as I want, but they are an improvement. These are the hinges that are based on the plastic hinges with no additional modification to the angle that the stop limiter mechanism is set to. Uh, I have a whole batch of additional hinges which do have adjustments to the stop mechanism, so we'll see. Okay, these metal hinges here don't really provide an angle that's likely to be useful to just about anybody. These plastic brackets here are some 3D printed brackets that I am testing to see if any of them provide the right fitness for me. Interestingly enough, they've all been fairly easy to 3D print with detachable support, so that's a plus.